Albert Einstein has been quoted in saying that the most important decision you will ever make in your life is to determine whether or not you live in a friendly or a hostile universe. Now, there are a lot of people you know, online, if you go Google who said this, some people said he didn't say it. It doesn't matter to me. It's still true. I don't care who said it. I agree. The most important decision you'll ever make is whether you live in a friendly or a hostile universe. I'm going to connect that now to a scientific uh, article that just came out about uh, consciousness, and it's called A Neuroscientist and Philosopher's 1998 Bet on Consciousness Between Each Other Finally Ends After 25 Years. Okay, And so the concept of, is this a friendly or a hostile universe, is directly linked to the idea that What's consciousness about? Where does it come from? And these are two scientists who've known each other for a long time, who've been de debating since at least 1998 when they made this bet, um, what the source of consciousness is. And it, the article says, decades ago, friends David Chalmers and, and uh, Christoph Koch, I'm not positive I'm pronouncing their names right, but um, I've read their names several times. They're a philosopher and a neuroscientist, and they were debating whether or not consciousness was going to be, uh, an origin of consciousness was going to be found in the brain, okay? And so they debated that. Koch believed every conscious experience is associated with the activity of certain neurons necessary for the awareness that comes with it. While Chalmers liked the concept, he certainly wasn't entirely convinced. According to him, it would be difficult for scientists to find neural markers soon, and experts still had too much to learn about consciousness. Ultimately, the two decided to have a bet over a few bottles of wine. Fast forward 25 years to really the last couple weeks, um, and it looks like we have a winner in Chalmers. Despite years of scientific effort, experts still haven't learned how or why the experience of consciousness arises. Said, uh, let's see, one of them said this, over the years it's gradually been transmuting into a scientific mystery, at least one that we can partially get a grip on. And I think that's fair, we're partially getting a grip on. But Koch is the loser, in this, in this bet, because they haven't found nor, neuron origins for consciousness, Koch joked that while he had, he had been fueled back in the day on, by drinks and enthusiasm and said, when you're young, you've got to believe that things will be simple, okay? And so that, these are scientists and a philosopher debating about the origin of consciousness, and the guy that ended up losing the bet because they still haven't found the origin of consciousness in the brain uh, ends up saying, well, maybe things, or he'd like things to be simple, okay? Well, I'm going to make it super simple. Scientists can't figure this stuff out. It requires spirituality to figure things out, okay? And when New Eyes was written back in, in 2015, early on in the book, I talked about Chalmers and the idea of consciousness being a very difficult problem. They call it the hard problem of consciousness because we cannot find its source. We can't find the origin of consciousness. We don't know where it starts. And, and a good way to think of it, again, is when you think of a radio... Does the song that you listen to on a radio come from inside the radio? Or is it somehow coming from some other source? And of course it is. Jesus even talked about this in the Gospel of Thomas. He talks about the miracle that life is. But what a miracle it would be if, if physical life produces spirit. I'm paraphrasing. And so what we have is a, a lot of scientists trying to figure out consciousness, what it is and where it comes from. And I'm going to explain it really quickly, really simply, just by switching the concept of what consciousness is into something a little bit different. And then demonstrating how you can figure out the answer yourself. You don't need scientists to figure it out for you because you can experience it yourself directly, okay? And it does go back to that Einstein question of, is the universe friendly or hostile? And here we go. So consciousness, I always draw it like this, some sort of energy thing, okay? In quotes, because it can mean a, mean a bunch of other things. But to answer it spiritually, all we have to do is flip it into the idea of love. And love can be equated to high levels of consciousness. And here I've got low level of consciousness being fear, okay? Just two states that we're all used to. There's many degrees in between. But if you think of consciousness, pure consciousness, the origin of consciousness being love, and that at its highest level, you know, that's where we can all operate. Now we can work with a, uh, a definition of consciousness that we can relate to and experience, okay? And then you'll know yourself because you feel more consciousness as a result, the more love you feel. What happens with consciousness that we all have when it's in the low state, the low vibrating state, the fear state? It's the place where the ego operates. It's, the, it's literally, again, ego in Greek means I. And it's the, 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 the vibration of separation, which is very much a physical thing. We are physically separated. 
according to you know uh, the the physics of things, you know atoms don't even touch because on the molecular level, on the subatomic level, you know the vibe, the the forces between them repel, and and physically we're always separated. Division is lower levels of consciousness. We argue over ideas. I'm right and you're wrong. You know your opinion is is uh, incorrect, and my profit is better than yours, and and uh, the way we should do things is this, and or uh, the opposite. You're better than I am. You're better looking, or you have more money, and I'm jealous of you, and all that kind of stuff. That's all operating on low level of consciousness. And it's experienced this thing called fear. It's negative energy, and none of us like it. Right? It's actually pretty obvious. Because if you're operating in a low level of consciousness, you're going to be operating from the ego perspective, the separation perspective, the divisive perspective. And so consciousness, which again is a concept we can all grasp pretty well, when it matures, when it grows, when it gets stronger, it moves towards the higher level, which we experience as a for, of a feeling called love. And it can be defined by the spiritual self, or we, not I. It's defined by the connection, but it's an energetic connection. We don't connect physically, we can't touch physically, but we sure can connect energetically. We experience this all the time in vibes, good vibes, and. And, and, that, and the like. Music, of course, does that a lot. Shared common experiences like movies. You know, we feel the love. We can feel the sadness together. You know, we feel that. It's always present. And in science, it's, it's Einstein's entanglement. Energy is always connected, while particles never touch. Okay? On the low level, it's physical. On the higher level, it's non-physical. It's energetic connection. And of course, the high level of consciousness is the level of unity. And instead of arguing over ideas, we're bonding over ideas. We go, hey, does that work for you? It actually works for me. You know, when I forgive, which is just a concept, I feel better. I feel more love. When I'm considering things from a relative perspective, well, maybe that person has a different opinion on politics because of the way they're raised and where they were born and all their experiences. And, and it's not right or wrong, like Rumi says. There's a field beyond right doing and wrong doing. I'll meet you there. Well, that field is high-level consciousness, which we can just call love. And again, in 1 John in Scripture, it says God is love. So here we have consciousness, this thing that scientists can't figure out the source of, and yet we can all experience it, because what's the source of love? Where does love come from? What a weird question. Who would even ask that question? Scientists are taking love and trying to figure out its origin. What's the origin of love? But can you experience love? Of course you can. Who needs to, who needs to know the origin? Jesus even says... We don't know where the wind starts, but you feel it, don't you? We don't know where consciousness starts. Who cares? I know it doesn't start in my brain. I'll let the scientists keep looking for that. They're going to waste their time. That's why Chalmers won the bet. It's a hard problem because it's not in the brain, just like radio uh, songs aren't in the radio. Okay? The, the brain can have the experience of high level of consciousness, and when we lay, raise our vibration, we experience the unity and the connection between things. High levels of love includes trusting and forgiving and so many virtues, you know, patience and acceptance and all of that. Now we start to feel the consciousness raise inside of ourselves and we get rewarded, if you will, with this feeling called love. And then up there, you don't, I don't care what the scientists say anymore. They could say, well, it's not in the brain or let's look for it, whatever, but I don't know. They're, they're talking about something that doesn't matter to me anymore. And that's everyone's option. You know, you can wait for them to figure it out or experience it yourself. As we talked about in New Eyes in chapter 20, uh, science is limited. Um, several different scientists have come around and said, you know, we can only go so far with science, okay? The rest of it, what faith is, is to experience it yourself. The Buddha says, once you've experienced it yourself, you need no teacher. You don't need any proof. You don't need any science once you've experienced it yourself. So the highest level of consciousness is love. Did any prophet mention this? Well, all of them one way or another. But I'm going to quote Krishna here in the Gita who says, The great Lord is called the highest self, man's true spirit in this body. So the great Lord, Krishna himself, was called Lord Krishna, just like Jesus is called Lord Christ or Lord Jesus. or The way we think of these prophets, often physically oriented, is actually spiritual because that same force that was in Jesus and in Krishna and in everyone is present in us. It's a high level of consciousness, which you can call love, but it's all-encompassing love. It's loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, okay? It's loving every aspect of our being, not just the ones that, are, that, that feel friendly to us. And now we've got the Einstein quote again. Is it friendly or is it hostile? Well, the most important decision for a person who's working on the origin of consciousness is to see the world as friendly all the time. 
I was just studying some Kabbalah teachings the other day, and they said specifically that everything that happens in this universe, everything is oriented towards one goal, to unite you or demonstrate to you that you are equivalent to the Creator, that you are on the level of God. Again, most people go, what? No way. I'm far inferior to the Creator. And yet, the Kabbalah teaches, no, everything that's happening to you is showing you that you're on the same level. Just like Jesus said, you are the light. Okay? It's the same thing. The highest level of consciousness is the light. And here's Krishna saying the great Lord is called the highest self. Well, you have the low self ego and you have the high self, the spirit inside you. That's what you really are. And if we spend our time focusing on all these ego things and all the physical stuff and all the separation, that's what we experience. Negative emotion. What is that negative emotion doing? It's forcing you to learn how to look at the world from a different perspective, a unifying perspective. As Einstein would say, a friendly perspective, not a hostile one. We all die, and then you'll find out how well you did in this game. And you're not going to take your body and all this ego stuff with you. What we do take with us, if we take anything, would be the spirit. Because that's our origin, and that's the origin of consciousness. It's just this game of figuring out low, uh, low level of consciousness, high level of consciousness. And so, Krishna's line links directly to something that I looked up again, Einstein did say. Subtle is the Lord, but malicious he is not. I love that line. Subtle is the Lord, but malicious is he, he is not. Now, he talked about this line in, in reference to the way he looks at nature and the way he experienced nature and studying science. That nature, while it's challenging to figure out, which I would say includes the consciousness thing, it's, the, it's not easy for them to figure it out. That's why they call it a hard problem. It might be subtle, but it's not done to be deceptive. It's not trickery, as Einstein said, okay? It's not malicious. It's not trying to make things difficult on you. It actually can be very easy if you just, just chose friendly all the time. If we just constantly chose friendly, like Rumi says, we're separated from God by 7,000 veils of light. If we would just love in each moment, one of those veils gets removed. Well, what if we just chose friendly all the time? There's not going to be any maliciousness. We're the ones that layer the maliciousness on top of it by saying, bad, this is bad, I don't like this, I wish that didn't happen, on and on and on. Non-stop, this is for everybody, and this is everyone's experience. So this is a subtle experience, isn't it? Now, he said, subtle is the Lord. And what did Krishna say? The Lord is the highest self within yourself. Well, that's pretty darn subtle, isn't it? Because we don't know, and we, in fact, we get taught that the Lord is this other being from thousands of years ago if you fall down and worship you get to go to heaven. <laughs> or alternatively, you can learn that Jesus, when he says the light's in you, and when Krishna says the Lord is your highest self, you could just say, well, maybe that's this thing called love. And as you practice it and you work on it and you look on the, for the unity between each other as opposed to the differences, you then yourself experience this raising, this vibration, this heightened sense of, of consciousness, and you'll feel it as love. And then you yourself know the answer to the origin of consciousness. Because it's found inside you. It's an experience that you have. It's deep inside of you. It's not found in your brain. Krishna even said that the highest self resides in the heart. Okay? We use the brain. It's not going to be found up here. We use the brain to figure that out. But you follow the heart. You follow the love that's found right here. And now you know the origin of consciousness is right there.